Hey guys, I'm Jim, I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm diving back into Aurora HDR. I did a video recently where I kind of dove back into it for the first time in a while. And now that I'm back in it, I'm having a lot of fun to be honest. I kind of forgot how much fun it is. And there's some features in it that you can really take advantage of, namely layers and luminosity mass to get some creative control over your photo. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I've got six different images and I'm gonna make an HDR, I'm gonna do some layers, I'm gonna do some luminosity mask, and I'm gonna show you the kind of fun that you can have with Aurora HDR. So let's get started. I'm currently in Luminar, and that's because I want to show you the images. So basically, I was taking brackets one evening in London and trying to capture some long exposures, you know, passing cars and buses and then all that stuff. So I've got six different images, all of them kind of eh, but together I think I end up with something pretty fun. So here's the first one, and here's the second one, and image number three, you can see a bus coming. Image number four, bus kind of blurring, that one really comes in handy in this blend that I'm going to do. Image number five, nice stuff in the foreground, and image number six, some more nice stuff in the foreground. So those are my six images that I'm going to take. Let me get them in Finder. Here they are. I'm going to drop down to Aurora HDR and load these guys up and get going. So here we go. I've got auto alignment. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to turn on ghost reduction. And I'm going to pick that image and I'm going to check high. And I will admit that is purely down to experimentation. That's the result that I liked best. I tried this a few different ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So you can see my six images here, ready to blend, different exposure values and all that. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit Create HDR, and we're gonna make something fun out of this. Okay, so here is my base blended HDR. And you know, I think it looks really good in uh, the majority of the photo, but if you remember from the Luminar images, there's this kind of stuff, specifically this image. And you can see the image down here is 5852. These are all um, raw files. But if you look at that, that's got some beautiful streaks down below. Don't really have that here, but the rest of the photo I like. So what I wanna do is take advantage of the power of layers so I can blend back in that image. So I'm gonna click plus and add new image layer. And 5852 is right there. I'm gonna click open and stick that in on top of the blended HDR. So I'm kind of doing an HDR plus an exposure blend. And there you go. Now that's been added. However, um, I need to blend it together. So the, because it's the bottom of the photo, your initial thinking might be, hey, let me go ahead and get a gradient mask and just drag that in, something like that. And you can absolutely do that to get all of that, uh, those light trails blended in. So if I did that, and if I turn this off, you can see there's the before, and there it is after I brought back those light streaks, they kind of blended in, and you could go in and make adjustments as necessary. But what I wanna do is actually not do that. So I'm just gonna say fill, uh, and I'm actually, actually I'm just gonna clear it. There we go. So no mask. Um, and so what I've got now is basically, oh, actually I need to fill that, sorry. Let me hit fill so that that image is back on top. There we go, and done. So now I've basically still got my raw image, that 5852 laying on top of my HDR, and they're not blended, so all you're seeing is the top image. So if I turn this off, there it is before, and there is the current image. Now you can also see that there was some camera shift apparently um, between the two, so that building is kind of out of sorts. We're gonna fix that as well. But the way I wanna blend this is with a luminosity mask. And so if you're not familiar with the luminosity mask, it applies a mask based on light value. So the brighter parts of the image get more of the mask and the darker parts get less or none. So I'm gonna hit luminosity. And one of the beautiful things about Aurora is of course it does that for you. And there you go, you can see it's stuck that in there and it's blended those brighter parts. If I turn, oops, uh, not that. If I turn that off, you can see the before and now you can see the after. So it's actually got these light streaks coming through really nicely, I think. And it's got this building coming through as well that in the base image was covered up by the blurring bus, except that center section's kind of dead. And now I've got some of the nice blur of the bus up top. I've got that building coming through and I've got those light streaks down below. However, there was some, um, some camera shake as you can see. So what I need to do is go in here and I'm just gonna erase that from um, that section of the photo. So I just need to come over here and you can see as I erase this, I'm just getting a cleaner image over here because 
for whatever reason, there was camera movement or shake that I wasn't aware of, and blending that together um, made it come through. So I'm doing that there, and I'm gonna do the same over here because I got some shake in that side as well. So basically, I'm just erasing that luminosity mask from these parts of the photo. If I show you the mask, there it is. And let me get that up here. And I'm gonna leave it in the people. You're not gonna notice camera shake in people that are ghosting out. So if I hit done, now what I've got is clean buildings that align perfectly on either side. I've got the big bus blur, and I've got all those light streaks on the bottom. So, uh, gosh, I keep hitting the masking button. Let me, let me turn that off. So there it is before, and there it is after. I basically blended in that building and these light streaks to give me a busier photo. Frankly, it's super busy, but I really like how the layers and the luminosity mask allowed me to blend back in one of the original exposures into that HDR. And now I've got a kind of a, a final blend, for lack of a better word, that I think looks pretty good. And now it's down to making some adjustments. So I'm gonna hit plus and add new adjustment layer and I'm gonna go in and I gotta look at my notes here. I'm gonna cool it off a little bit, so about a negative 20 or so here and add a little bit of contrast. So that's uh, something about like that. Smart Tone is gonna come up. I love Smart Tone, I've, I've forgotten how great that is, but um, I, I used to use that on probably every image and I'm gonna keep using it a lot. And highlights are gonna come down a bit as well. Something about like that. I am gonna go to HDR Enhance. I'm gonna bump these up a little bit. So that's going to like mid 40s and Smart Structure is going to maybe about 50. Just kind of getting some crunch and let's just be honest. I mean, it's a blended HDR, lots of light streaks, city, all kinds of stuff going on. I don't really care if it's kind of over the top because just the definite, the basic image itself is kind of over the top. Uh, LUTs, I'm gonna go choose one of my own custom LUTs that I've made and I need to go to my desktop. I need to go to LUTs and I'm gonna get this blue hour and I'm gonna click OK and stick that on there and that's brightened it up, giving it some color pop, which I kind of like. And I'm now gonna go get image radiance and I'm gonna bump that to you know, low 30s, let's call it a 33. And you know, I think that looks pretty good. This layer, this adjustment layer one, there's the before and there's the after. Some filter adjustments, a LUT, kind of getting there, but I still have some more things that I wanna do. The first thing I notice is that this building on the right hand side is really just too colorful. So what I wanna do is take that blue saturation down so I've got a new adjustment layer. I'm in HSL, I'm in saturation of the blue, and I'm gonna come down like a negative 75 or something because it's just too blue over there, but I need to brush this in. So what I need to do here is I'm just painting in this negative blue into that building because it was just way too much. So now what I've done, if you look at the mask, that negative blue is just applying there where my red is, and that's just because that building was a super blue. So if I turn this off, if you look at that building, it was way blue, and I turn this uh, back on, I've now removed the blue. So that's what that layer is for. And the thing about Aurora is there are no filter-specific masks. You have to mask at the layer level. So uh, even though I was just using one filter, it's not like Luminar where you can do that one filter and mask it in. You have to do that by layer. But that's okay, no big deal, easy enough to do. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna add another adjustment layer. And in this case, I'm gonna go into basic and I'm just gonna make a, you know, a few minor um, edits here. This was kind of a touch-up layer for me and I thought it was gonna be my final layer, but it ended up not being my final layer. So I treated this as a final layer, which is come in and make these kind of basic adjustments and whatnot. I even went in and added a vignette on this layer and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So something about like that and shrink the size a little bit. So maybe something about like that. So at that point, I thought I was done. Um, so if I turn this off, there it is before and there it is current state. The only thing was I didn't like some of the colors to be honest. And so I experimented with LUTs and adjustments and what I ended up doing is just adding a new adjustment layer and using one of my own presets. So I'm gonna click on uh, open the preset menu. I'm, I'm in my Road Tripper preset pack, which you can purchase on my blog. There's a link down below. It's just in the store on my blog, but it's a bunch of presets for um, Aurora HDR. I'm gonna use this Scenic Vista, and I'm gonna go ahead and close that preset menu. And the thing about it is, it's just a bit too much. Um, I like it, but it was just too much. And so usually when something is uh, that I like goes on, but it's too much, that's where I use Luminosity Mask again. So once again, 
I'm gonna use a luminosity mask and apply that based on light values. It does it for me, applies it, you know, basically based on light values across the photo. However, one of the things I wanted to do is come in here and you gotta go into the brush, uh, but I wanted to go into this mask and I actually wanna invert it so that it applies in the opposite parts of the photo. So in other words, that's what the mask looks like. This preset that I added is applying um, wherever the red is, right? So it's, uh, by definition, the luminosity mask was applying it to the brighter parts of the photo, which as you can see here are the light streaks and some of the lights reflecting on those buildings and the signs. I didn't want that. I wanted it to apply to the opposite. So that's why I went in and inverted it. And so there I go. I've just uh, applied that. And what I want to do is, uh, once again, actually I should have stayed in this menu. Um, I just feel like it's too much on this building. So I'm gonna hit X. X allows you to bounce between paint and erase. And I'm just gonna erase this preset from the building because this preset basically added back a bunch of saturation to that negative saturation I had previously applied to the building. So I kinda had to go do that twice. But um, that's just because I did things out of order where uh, when I was building this photo the first time, I had this adjustment layer reduce the blue, but because I came back and did further adjustments, I kind of messed that up. So you could be a little bit more efficient than I was in your workflow, but that is basically my workflow for this one. And so I feel like if you go back to Luminar, these are the six photos. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and I blended them together, made it into an HDR. Um, this part looks kind of crazy because it's that bus reflecting the building and all that kind of stuff. I kind of like it, it doesn't bother me. You could always mask things like that out if it did bother you, where I did some masking down here with like the luminosity mask and all that. You can just um, add layers, mask it in selectively, and again, that's why I like luminosity masks and layers in Aurora because it gives you so much creative control. You can just go in and customize the image to get the look that you want. And this is a combination of a blended HDR plus a blended exposure of an additional uh, one of that bracket set blended back in and then multiple adjustments and masks as needed across the image. It's a crazy image. I just It's kind of over the top. It's colorful. It's bright. It's vibrant. But to me, that's kind of a night in London. Like people are walking, there's buses and cars passing. You got beautiful architecture. I just think it all came together. I like the result. It's very much like boom, kind of in your face, but I like it. I think it came out pretty cool looking. That's how I did it in Aurora HDR, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how you can use this tool and get creative control over your photos using layers and of course, luminosity mass here in Aurora. Thanks for watching my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon and adios.